بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بأحسان لا يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون والذين هم للزكاة فاعلون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون صدق الله العظيم Respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, through the barakah and through the blessing of our beautiful deen and this gift of Islam that Allah Ta'ala has given us, through this gift, if we implement the complete deen in our life, this will guarantee, inshaAllah, success in this life and success in the hereafter. Success in this life and the hereafter, all of it is dependent on implementing in our lives complete deen. The whole package, as they say. And having this mentality that, you know, تُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ You believe in a part, part of it and you don't believe in a part of it. It doesn't work like that. Somebody was asking me about certain things and how it's not working for him and so on and so forth. So I said, Islam is a complete package. If you take it completely, it will give you what it has promised. And if you follow and you pick and choose what you want to pick and choose, then that success that Allah Ta'ala has guaranteed will not be guaranteed. The guarantee of success and the guarantee of prosperity when following deen is all based upon what? That we follow the complete deen? At least we try. With that being said, SubhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Verily, the believers have become successful. Now, in regards to this falah and its success, Allah Azza wa Jal has listed a couple of things. From amongst those things, Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَلَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who have in their prayer humbleness and humility in their prayer. So this is the first, or you could say after Iman, the first action that will guarantee a believer's success is what? Is that we have prayer in our life. And what is the prayer? It is our link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what we do, and no matter what we try to achieve, and no matter where we try to go in life, if we don't have a connection with Allah azza wa jal, whatever we do, it will, no matter how apparent the success might seem deep in the heart because there's no a connection with Allah, a person will not reach success. A person will not be happy. They will not be content. So this is point number one, is after faith in Allah for a person to achieve a connection with Allah. That connection is attained through salah. Those who turn away from useless, futile things that are t wasters of time and distractors from what is your purpose. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who are the doers of zakah. So there's two meanings here. One meaning is those who are actually the givers of zakat, literally. And the other meaning that the ulama have given, those who are constantly making an effort to purify themselves. They are people who are constantly working upon purifying themselves. Constantly working on bettering themselves. And I will guarantee you, in this life, the person who continues to better themselves, work on themselves, purify themselves, reform themselves of evil characteristics, they will continue to prosper. And the person who is the one who will always be losing in everything in life, even though they think that they're going very far, is the person who says, I'm perfect. There's nothing wrong with me. Accept me the way I am. This is, my ha this is my habit. This is the way I am. Actually, this person, you will see, 
they are a problem for themselves and they are a problem for everyone else that is around them. The one who says, I'm perfect, there's nothing wrong with me. Everyone, my dear brothers and sisters, has room for improvement. Every single person has room for improvement. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab anhu, when he talk about zakati fa'ilun, those who are the doers of purification. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab anhu said, Rahimallahu abdan ahda ilayya uyubi. May Allah have mercy on that person who gifts me my mistakes. Gift. He gives me a gift. Sayyidina Umar said that the one who tells me my mistake, may Allah have mercy on him. And we are opposite. We say, may Allah curse the one who tells me that I'm wrong. How do you say I'm wrong? I can never be wrong. We all make mistakes. But this statement of Allah Azza wa is very profound. In that as long as we are continuously concerned about our own rectification, about our own reformation, and we understand that I always have room for improvement. I can always become better in my character, in my attitude, in my perspective. The more knowledge I gain, the more ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more of the sunnah and the character of the Prophet sallallahu I learn, the more experience that I get in life, this should make me a better and better human being. We all have something inside of us, brothers and sisters, it's called nafs. The nafs is all of your evil tendencies. The worst version of you. I don't know if you all remember this story. It's an old, it's an old story in American literature called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll was a very good doctor. He was a good person, but then something would happen to him and he would become Mr. Hyde, this crazy lunatic. And in reality, we all have that Mr. Hyde inside of us. We all have that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We have the best version of ourselves, which Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us. What Allah wants from us to become. As he says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ We created human being with the best of potential. That he can become that insan and that human being that Allah commanded the angels, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ Can you imagine? Allah Ta'ala commanded the angels and said, prostrate to Adam. What was within Adam that made him worthy of the prostration of the angels? What was in him? Allah Ta'ala had endowed him. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala presented Adam Alayhi Salaam with the names of all things. Allah had given him knowledge. Allah had given him knowledge and with knowledge comes truth and reality. And with that knowledge then we can rectify ourselves and with the knowledge we can understand the world and with knowledge we can open up the doors of rectification and reformation. Some say that this knowledge that Allah Ta'ala had given him, this was the knowledge of the beautiful names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He knew the beautiful names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made Adam the reflection. Allah Ta'ala is Rahman and Rahim. Adam Alayhi Salam is the reflection of fulfilling mercy in this world. As he says, Ar-Rahimun, Yarhamuhum Ar-Rahman, Irhamu man fil ardi, Yarhamukum man fil sama. The most merciful on this earth, Allah who is the most merciful shows mercy to them. Meaning if you are merciful, you have that special attribute, Allah Ta'ala is Ar-Rahman. And He loves, He is the most merciful and He loves those who show mercy. Allah is the generous and He loves those who show generosity. Allah is the most compassionate and Allah loves those who show compassion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most kind and He loves those who show kindness. So all of these things, this is what, the, what, what, what Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تقويم. We created insan with the best potential and the best of molds that he can become a reflection of those beautiful attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah is Rahman and Rahim and Malik, and Allah Azza wa Jal is Latif and Kareem. Allah is kind and merciful. 
we can reflect those attributes, become a reflection, and that, and that is why Allah Azza wa Jal says, right? Allahu Jamilun Yuhibbul Jamal. Allah Ta'ala is the possessor of all beautiful attributes, and He loves those who are beautiful. Allahu Latifun Yuhibbul Lutf. Allah is kind and He loves kindness. So from this we understand is reflecting those attributes, Allah Azza wa brought us in this world to become that. Just like our father Adam, when he became the perfect human being, Allah created him the perfect manifestation and reflection of those beautiful attributes of Allah Ta'ala. He commanded then the malaika, usjudu li Adam, prostrate to Adam. فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ All of them prostrated except Iblis. And what did Iblis say? قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْ I am better than him. How can you be better than the one who is reflecting the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal? How can you be better than the one who Allah SWT selected him? Right? As Khalifatullahi fil ard. As the representative. What, what does insan represent of Allah on this earth? What do we... Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal is one. What, what, what of Allah do we represent on this earth? As I mentioned, Allah's mercy, we show mercy to one another. Allah's kindness, we show kindness to one another. Allah's generosity, Allah's, all of these beautiful attributes, this is Khalifatullahi fil ard, to establish the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the objective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this earth, this was the and then what did, what did Iblis say immediately? He goes, Ana min. I am better than him. Min nar wa min teen. No, I'm perfect. You see, no room for improvement. No. There, I, am, I am, in this sense, I am better than everybody. I, I don't need to prostrate to somebody. I don't need to humble myself to somebody. And this is that Iblis, that shaitanic mode that a person, when he starts thinking that I am perfect, and it is that moment that he starts going down. <clears throat> One of my teachers, he was, I had an opportunity to sit with him in privacy and I asked, give me some advice. So he told me, he said, you know when you take a ball and you bounce it really hard on the ground, you take that ball and you bounce it really hard, physics, right? At that top point, the climax of the rise of that ball, when the ball cannot go any higher, that is the climax of the rise of this object. When you smash an object really hard like a ball on the ground, and it goes to the highest point, the moment of its climax is actually the moment of its decline. Very, it's amazing advice that he gave. He said that moment where that object that is going in the sky the moment that it has reached it, its high point, its climax, that is the point of descent. Those of you who are, you know, in physics, you can understand it in the physics terminology. But an object which is, right, put with force, struck with force, and it reaches its high point, for example, the moment that it reaches its climax is actually the moment of its descent. So he told me, remember this always in your life. Never ever say, I am at the top. And never say, I have no room for improvement. And never say, I know everything. And never say, I am the most knowledgeable. And never say, I can never be wrong. I am perfect. I have reached my pinnacle. Okay, then he says, if you believe that you've reached your pinnacle, then that is your moment of descent. That is your moment of decline. That is your moment of degeneration coming down. Your high point, when you say, I am at my top, I am at my pinnacle, I cannot rise any higher, I am beyond any correction, I am beyond any rectification, I have no reformation, I am perfect. That is your moment that you're going down. Habib, very famous MMA fighter, he said one time, he said, you could be black belt, but up here you always got to be white belt. You understand? Those who know black belt, white belt, I'm not talking about, you know, the belt that you get from Macy's, that black belt, white belt. I'm talking about martial arts. 
Black belt is the highest point. When you get the black belt, that's the highest point that you reach. He said, even if you're black belt, here in your mind, you always have to be white belt. In, in other words, in my mind, I always have room for improvement. I always can become a better person. And this is the, this is the thing that it, it, it holds us back in our deen and it holds us back in our dunya. This concept that I, have, I don't need to do any more better. I know everything already. Even in our deen, subhanallah. I mean, imagine Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Somebody came to him and said, Oh Musa, who is the most knowledgeable of all? So Sayyidina Musa, he said it how it is. He said, I'm the most knowledgeable of all. And Musa alayhi salam was the prophet of the time. So he wasn't wrong for saying, I am the most knowledgeable. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him that he should say, Allah is the most knowledgeable of Allah. He could have said this and that is what Allah expected from him because he is the prophet of Allah. There's Allah Ta'ala then wanted to put him and teach him a lesson in seeking and a lesson to rectify this and correct this to say no. Allah is the most knowledgeable of all. Even though what Musa salam said was not incorrect. He did not make actually a mistake because that perfect, the person was asking him, who is the most knowledgeable of people on earth? None of the heavens. And you know, Musa salam understood, obviously he was the messenger of Allah. And the messenger of Allah is the most knowledgeable of his community. So he wasn't wrong. But Allah wanted to teach him. And he said, oh Musa, Go to Khidr, Sayyidina Khidr, and you will meet him at this place. And when you meet him at this place, tell him who you are, and he will show you. He will show you. And when Sayyidina Musa met Khidr, the story is a bit of a long story, but they sat on a ship, and a bird came at the edge of this ship and took one beak of water from that river. He took one, just one drink of water in its beak. So Khidr salam said to Musa, he said, Oh Musa, my knowledge and your knowledge in comparison to the knowledge of Allah is not even in comparison to what that bird took in his beak in comparison to that river or that ocean. That is how vast is the knowledge of Allah and my knowledge and your knowledge put together is like what that bird took in his beak. So brothers, this is what can we imagine about ourselves? We think we know everything. If somebody tells us, or we, sometimes we laugh at an imam or a shaykh and say, Ichi mega, I know, I know this already. And then what do we say? My dad was such and such. My dad was a qari, or my dad was an imam. Okay, your dad was an imam, what are you? So a lot of times, I'll tell you, in our deen and in our dunya, sometimes we're having marriage problems. Sometimes we're having fights. Husband and wife, they're in a disagreement. And somebody will say, I will never go to somebody I will never listen to somebody's advice. How could you say that? You're ready to ruin your whole relationship and you're ready to ruin your whole marriage. You know why? Because you think that you know everything. There's no possibility that you could be wrong. And this destroys marriages and it destroys lives. Somebody will walk out of the house, one of the kids will walk out. No, 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 I don't want anybody to tell me. My parents don't know me. They don't know what I'm going through. Whereas your parents have experienced more than you, they've lived your life three times over. More than you. So this, this mindset, brothers and sisters, it sets us back in our deen, and it sets us back in our dunya. Sayyidina Ibn Atta'illah Iskandari rahmatullahi he said, the root of all evil is thinking oneself to be perfect. Rida bin nafs. Rida bin nafs. The root of all evil is considering yourself to be right and considering yourself to be perfect and righteous. Arriba bin nafs, being pleased with yourself. I'm fine. I'm fine. I have no room for betterment. I have no room for improvement. Just have this in, in your mind. We always have room for betterment and improvement. A businessman who is a successful businessman, he doesn't look at he is never happy. He is never satisfied. There was one businessman, he was a you know, Wall Street tycoon, billionaire, everything. And they asked him, what is, your, what is your secret to success? 
Listen to what this billionaire said. What is your, what is your, what is your uh, secret to success in your business? He said, the secret to, to, to success in my business is I, I can never have enough. There's always room for more. More, more. There's always room for more. That is why. That's why I can't sit. That's why I have no day off. Think about this. If we have that in our deen, if we have that in our, in our attitude to better ourselves, no, there's always room for improvement. I can always better myself. I can always gain more knowledge. I can always become a good, better human being than I am right now. So Ibn Atayla said, the root of all evil is ridha bin nafs. The root of all problems is you're pleased with yourself. I'm fine. I don't need to get advice from anybody. I don't need to ask from anybody. I don't need to learn from anybody. I know it myself. I'll go look it up myself. And a lot of times we fall into major mistakes. And then he said this advice. He said, and the root of all good and the root of all righteousness and growth in a person is what? The root of all good and the root of all success in a person is being displeased with yourself. I'm not happy. Like that billionaire said, it's not enough. Obviously, you don't push yourself. You know your limit. But the point here is, is when it's not enough, you're always going to do more. When it's not enough, you always want to keep on going. When you're satisfied, that is the moment where then what do you do? You, you sit back and you say, I don't need to do anything. So this is, subhanAllah, the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, what he's saying. Qad aflah al mu'minun. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying that the believers have attained success and prosperity. From amongst that list, those who are punctual on their prayers, those who are the people of the Iman, those who turn away from futile pursuits, those who are constantly doing purification, those who are constantly doing rectification, those who are trying to always become the best version of themselves and never being prideful, being, right? Not like Iblis. I don't need to do, I don't need to prostrate. I don't need to humble myself. I am better. I am the best. And we see what happened to him. We see that he became cursed that moment that he says, I'm the best. And remember like that ball that's rising, the moment that it reaches its climax, that is the moment that is going to descend. And as, as long as that ball is going higher and higher every moment, then it is going to continue to rise. The moment that it stops and reaches its pinnacle, that's why in your mind and in your attitude and in your perspective, never allow yourself to say, I have reached my pinnacle. I am at the top point. I, I have no room for improvement. I have no mistakes. I have nothing wrong. You should always say, I, always, I, I have the possibility to correct myself. I'm open to any criticism or any advice. And as long as we do that, brothers and sisters, we will be successful. May Allah give us tawfiq to understand what has been said. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah. Subhanakallah.